All right. I think you guys know the drill by now. We are pounding SEC and Big 12 media days here on the launch of the unofficial start of college football season, at least for the talk, as we have SEC media days from Atlanta, the Big 12 from Frisco, Texas, and later in the week, the ACC. We go to Will Gunter, who is taking in the SEC festivities. He joins us from the all new early game, 107.5 The Game. Will, how are you doing today? Been a, it's been a long day, obviously, starting with the radio program at, at 6 a.m., and it's a little after 5 now, but it's been a fun day, a different day, as we've done it from Atlanta, uh, as opposed to Birmingham, Alabama, first year here at the Omni at the College Football Hall of Fame. So it's been a, a different day, uh, as we've gotten Texas A&M, Kentucky, and LSU uh, to get us underway. So we love to chat uh, about what's going on otherwise, but we don't have a whole lot of time. You've got uh, festivities to go to, and uh, you've been working all day. So we'll we'll dive right into LSU and Texas A&M, and let's start with Coach O. Uh, anything in particular that you took from uh, his uh, talk at the podium? Well, he's, you know, obviously with LSU, it's always going to be talking about offense. And I do think it was interesting him trying to explain – and I had not thought of this until I heard him talk about it, but the decision to initially have Steve Enzinger, Steve Enzinger, you get the point, as his offensive coordinator during his interim season, but then make the switch to, to Matt Canada last year only to go back to Steve Enzinger this coming season and trying to say how, how that is the right decision, which then prompted the question, well, why not keep him initially? Uh, but but uh, Orgeron talking today about how they will be a spread offense, multiple wide receiver sets, three, four, and five. They would like to be 50-50 uh, in terms of the run and the pass, but certainly it was, as you would expect with Coach Ed Orgeron, kind of an upbeat, energetic, uh, even with that, with that voice, an energetic type of speech, talking about the positives of LSU football and how they've been right there. It is hard to believe. He's probably on the hot seat, but that's a team, that's a program that's coming off a 9-4 and four season. They did lose to Troy, but you have a feeling if he doesn't maybe get the double digits in 2018, he could be uh, looking for a new job. That's a fan base that doesn't settle for less than championships, and certainly uh, when they see Alabama winning uh, the West, when they see Auburn winning the West, they wonder where their trophies are at, and he's going to need to deliver and deliver pretty quickly, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, and I get that. It should be an elite program. They have so much talent around there and pour so much into football, and they haven't seen that since 2011. It's been a lot of 8-4 and four type of football since then, but he comes in midseason. He goes 6-2 and two that year. Like you mentioned, 9-4, and four, and that took a last-second loss to Notre Dame in a bowl game. Otherwise, they probably go fringe top 10. So I know that there's a frustration with Alabama, and then you see Auburn uh, every so often jumping into the SEC title game uh, more frequently than you and there's there's a level of frustration but unless it's disastrous this year like six and six man it would be a tough call for me to make uh i i don't necessarily think he's the right guy for the job but having already made the decision and putting him in place i would think especially considering that brutal schedule they have to deal with that um that they may have more commitment but at the same time if they're looking for an excuse then they could say hey we went eight and four and you don't go eight and four too many times at lsu see ya we're looking for somebody else uh, you know, they open the season with Miami. You've got Georgia as one of your your Eastern Conference opponents. Georgia will go to Baton Rouge. Obviously, you've got the games against Auburn and Alabama. Mississippi State is a team that people think is going to be better. How about Texas A&M? Look, at, you know, I, I don't know if it's disastrous to go 6-6 six and six because it could be a very realistic situation. They'll go 6-6 six and six if the offense doesn't work. And if the offense doesn't work, Joe Burrows was certainly a name that was thrown around a lot, the Ohio State graduate transfer. And, uh, you know, I don't know whether Orgeron said they would like to have the quarterback situation worked out before they play Miami in Arlington, Texas, on Sunday night, September the 2nd. But certainly if that offense doesn't click, they probably go 6-6, six and six, maybe 5-7 and seven this year, and that would result probably in a new coach down on the bayou. Got Will Gunter on the line from the all-new early game, 107.5 The Game. Will joins us uh... – on a regular basis, always trying to track him down to get uh, his take on the SEC in South Carolina. In particular, he took in uh, Kentucky, LSU, and Texas A&M today, uh, a team that hasn't beaten LSU despite the Tigers' struggles elsewhere against its rivals. Texas A&M has never beaten LSU since they joined the SEC. Uh, Jimbo Fisher, though, he's, he's there to win championships. They're paying him a boatload of money to do it. Uh, what did he have to say? 
Well, uh, you know, again, he I think it was interesting as he talked about transitioning for really the first time into uh, a new coaching role. And at Florida State, he had been on the staff. He knew the, the personnel that he was working with. He knew the program when there was a coaching change from Bobby Bowden to himself uh, as the head coach in waiting. And so he was familiar with that program. Now he steps into a Texas A&M program in which, you know, when they get going here uh, in a few days, he'll have eight months under his belt and 15 spring practices. But he's still learning that program and trying to figure out Kellen Mond and Nick Starkle. He does have some good defensive linemen. He's got Travion Williams, who was here today, as a running back who can make some things happen. He's got some talented wide receivers. But he's still trying to find his footing in College Station, which is not what he had to do at Florida State. He stepped into a situation at Florida State. He'd been there. He knew the program. He knew the personnel that they had on campus for his first year. So it's kind of fascinating. I think you said something that I talked about with somebody last night. He's not there to win football games. You don't get $75 million over 10 years to win football games. You get it to win championships. And they've already presented him with the with the national championship trophy that doesn't have a date on it. That was a question asked today. Um, he's not there to win to go eight and four or nine and three. Kevin Sumlin could have done that. He's there to win the West, to win the SEC championship, and to go play in the college football playoff. And you know what? If he if he goes nine and three, ninety percent of the schools in the country love that. They would take nine and three and ten and two all day long. But if it doesn't come with a Western Division championship or an SEC championship, he's a failure. Did you get a chance to hear from Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner? It was boring. He, did, You know, obviously the discussion of a potential nine-game schedule is not something that they want to do. Uh, Greg Sankey, I think, kind of not wanting to let – that was certainly one topic, not wanting to let on too much about the potential for some kind of injury report. It was kind of interesting, an injury report discussion of some type similar to what the NFL puts out. Benny Snell Jr., the, the very talented running back for Kentucky, was asked today, would you want your opponents to – would you be in favor of an injury report? He said no. He said against Eastern Michigan this past year, he cracked his rib. He said, I don't want the next game, the opponent knowing i got to crack the rib. They might – you know, they're going to focus on hitting me in the ribs. And that's an interesting good point by, by a player saying, look, I, you know, we played through these injuries. I don't want the opposition knowing what I'm dealing with. But uh, Greg Sankey saying that – which he's wrong about, saying that they get one shot at an injury report. Now, you can change that yearly. And, and adjust that to, to fit the right mold. But uh, that was certainly another topic. We will be back in Hoover next year for the SEC championship, or for the SEC championship, for the SEC media day, which I will personally like probably a little bit more. Yeah, and that's a good point overall, not just concerning the injuries, but maybe listening to the players, the student athletes, a little bit more than we do concerning some of these issues before some decisions are made. Uh, I was just talking to a guy with uh, the Big 12, and uh, we were talking more about the landscape of the conference, the big picture issues and, and the stability of the Big 12 versus what the perception was a few years ago. And you love college football and follow the entire nation. And and uh, obviously quarterbacks thrive in the Big 12. But this year they only have Will Greer and everybody else is untested for the most part. All those things. So for the SEC, what what do you consider to be kind of the, the overarching narratives for the conference this season? Well, it should be quarterback play. When you talk about Drew Locke and Jared Stidham, whatever happens at Alabama with uh, with uh, Tua Tuga, Viola, and and Jalen Hurts, obviously Jake Bentley is the guy that we're going to talk about. Nick Fitzgerald, maybe Nick Fitzgerald will be here later this week. Jake Fromm. There's some very good quarterbacks in this league. Kyle Shermer is a guy for Vanderbilt who's been who will be a three year starter uh, this coming season. So there's some talented quarterbacks in this league. And I think that gets overshadowed because maybe they don't have the the elite guy. I don't know if Drew Locke is that guy. I don't know if Jarrett Stidham is truly the elite guy. Or if you throw Jared, uh, excuse me, Jake Bentley or Nick Fitzgerald in that. So maybe not the Peyton Manning, the big name quarterback guy. But there is a lot of talented quarterbacks in this league this year that uh, should that are developing year by year. That should make life very difficult for some defensive coaches. All right, Will Gunter, the all-new early game there in Columbia, South Carolina at Dell 107.5 The Game. Always talking up the SEC with us and always enjoy the conversation, Will. Uh, have a great time tonight, and I know you got three more days of this, so uh, a lot more to do, a lot more to hear, and uh, as much as we can get you back, we certainly will. So when you get a breather, uh, we'll have you back on. It's been a, this is the long day. for What is the long day for all of us? They actually, uh, the coaches have wrapped up here but the players are still going to about 6.50 tonight. 
Uh, I'll, I'll skip out on the rest of the players. I don't need to hear them, but uh, it's been it's been a long day. But tomorrow we start to get back into a regular gl- uh, grind. Kirby Smart gets us going tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., so it'll be interesting to hear from the SEC uh, defending champions coach. Excellent. So we want to let everyone know in the live chat here that right when we wrap up with Will, which is going to be in about 12 seconds, we've got Texas talk here in just a few minutes uh, with the Big 12 country. And then at uh, 645, 630 in that range, uh, Cowboys ride for free for Oklahoma State and Big 12 media days there. Thanks so much, Will. We will see you soon. Keep up your work. See you tomorrow. Thank you.